Hello again. Uh, you can see that the sun is shining here in on this winter's day. You see all the trees are gone from the leaves. And the last couple, I have them in the uh, pot here behind me. So today we're going to work, progressing up the body, we're going to work on our glutes today. So these are the big complex of muscles that run from your hips all the way down across your knee and attach uh, just below your knee joint, just below the patella in a big tendon down there. We're going to be looking at those uh, particularly today because for most people these tend to be short and tight. And if they are short and tight then they do cause knee problems, they cause all kinds of other issues as well. And I've been saying this repeatedly, you know, if one part of the body is malfunctioning as in tight and or maybe just too loose and weak, it's going to interfere with the rest because we're united beings in our physical aspect anyway, at least. So today, as I say, we're going to work on our glutes. And I think one really good way of getting started working on, sorry, uh, on your quads. OK, it's quads today, not glutes. Glutes was the last day. Okay, so the quads then. One good way of thinking about, you know, sort of on a day when you don't like feel, really feel like doing any of these uh, movements or exercises that help you live a long and healthy life, then one of the really good ways of starting is just to tap it out. Just tap out. Uh, just tap out your muscles. You can do it with sitting with your legs out straight and the muscles relaxed. And just a whole series of little taps. And it's amazing what even something as simple as that can do about changing your mind about doing a bit of exercise and a little rehab work. So we're going to begin then today tapping first, right? And that applies to any part of your body. So you can do it on your arms, you can do it on your face. Uh, very often that helps, it'll energize you. Um, I really believe in stuff like that. I think it really, really helps. So we're gonna start today, of all things, sitting on the chair. So I use my hand to get up there, but I've always been recommending that you don't use your hands, you try and get up without using your hands. So if you take a look at your body when you're sitting, and we all spend way too much time sitting. So these, these here are your quads here, and they attach just here below the knee. And they're, what do they do? They extend your leg. So that's what you do. So just feel your quads and then feel them tighten up. So you can see the kneecap lifting, you can see the quads engaging. Um, and that's what they're, that's what they do primarily. So walking, climbing stairs, all of those activities are really important uh, in terms of our movements, our daily movements and the health of our daily movements. So when you're sitting, sitting like this, um, the quads, as you can see, are in this particular position. And if you sit a long time like this, this is going to be the position they occupy because our bodies like to stay in the position in which we most frequently keep them. And just bear that in mind as you go forward. So if you find yourself sitting for two or three hours, uh, say in the evening without stirring, you're gonna be in that position. The body's gonna think, okay, that's grand, I'm gonna stay here. And then when you get up to walk, you're gonna find yourself not in a good position for walking. So when, you, when you're going to stand up out of this, and I would recommend that you do it regularly when you're going through any kind of prolonged seating procedure, stand up without using the arms of the chair. So for no, people normally, and it's just purely out of habit, we put the hands to the chair and we stand up. Simple thing, a simple way of energizing the quads is just to stand up without using them. And even that simple, simple exercise of sitting and standing and sitting and standing, feel your quads switch on, okay? And that's really, really important. And particularly for people who do not have enough mobility in the ankles or in the hip joints to do squats because most if you went to a gym most of the trainers that you would go to would say to you okay uh, what I want you to do is I want you to do squats and that's really going to switch uh, the quads on and uh, let's try a couple of those you don't have to come down too far but doing that simple sitting and standing is a way of getting started with movements like this I would always do these to begin with with my hands on my hips and I would just come down and stand up and you can feel your quads working. Come down and stand up. A couple of tips about this. My feet are at about a 45 degree angle, as you can see. They're a little wider than hip width apart, which I think you need to get that clearance that's going to allow you to open your hips. So a little tip about that as well. So to judge what hip width apart is. So my hips are here. And if I wanted hip width apart, 
it would be about here. And the best way to judge that is to take the toe, big toe of your right foot to the instep of your left and then step it out. For most of us then, that's um, hip, knee and ankle alignment. So they're all in a straight line. So you can do your squats like that. You can come straight back down and up. But for quite a lot of people, they're too restricted uh, to do that. So it's much better to take your squats like this. So a little wider than hip width apart with toes pointing out to the side. And as you come down, you want to think about pushing your knees away from each other. So the knees come away and then you come up. This is just from yoga. I have my hands to heart center. Put your hands on your hips and take your feet down and lift yourself up and take yourself down and lift yourself up. That's the first one of the exercise. You can do those repeatedly over any length of time. So when you find yourself sitting for too long, do the sitting yet to standing exercise or just stand on the floor, put your hands on your hips and just do a couple of squats. So you don't want to take your body forward too much. You want to try and keep your back up as much as possible. There is going to be a certain lean forward and remember, as you come down, you take your knees apart. And one other little thing, so we can link the glute muscles, the big glute muscles, into this exercise. When you come up, you squeeze your glutes. So let's just try it like that. So hands to your hips, your shoulders are back and down. So you're nice and open through the shoulders. Hands to your hips, you're coming down, coming up. Now squeeze your glutes. Just feel, put your hands on them. Don't be afraid to touch your body. Put your hands on your hips and you can, or on your glutes and you can feel them squeezed. Uh, so you're exercising them. Coming down and squeeze up. And then one more time, coming down and squeeze up. So these are all strengthening moves for your quadriceps. I'm going to do one more and this is what's called a wall sit. So I'm going to take myself over to the wall my feet are hip width apart, remember? Hip width apart. And then I'm going to sit down and I'm going to take my back. Oops, I knew that had happened. So that's, <laughs> you don't want to be standing on your mat whereas it can come away from you. So let's stand over here. I'll push the mat away a little bit. And so you're going to slide your back down the wall. You're going to have your knees about hip width apart. And you can squeeze your back into the wall to give yourself support and my feet are facing straight ahead and I can feel my glutes working, or sorry, my quads working. So quads here, so if you run your hands up along your quads, they're really switched on. Um, and you can sit here, you can fold your arms and sit here for as long as you like. If you want to do a little bit of work for your shoulders, you can take your hands back to the wall and this will be something we'll be doing later on when we come to shoulder movement or shoulder mobility. So now I'm opening through my chest opening across my shoulder girdle, and I am building strength all the time. We're gonna hold it, and my advice would be that you would hold this for, in the beginning, maybe a couple of seconds is going to be enough for you. But then as you progress, and I'll just slide my back up the wall to come up and step away from the wall. In the beginning, and I just get that straight, in the beginning, I would just do it for a short period of time, and then I would gradually build it up. So like with any of these exercises. It's all gradual movement forward. So beginning with a couple of, might only be a couple of seconds. And then you get to the point where you can sit there and read a book. And then you're gonna be building your quads all the time. So you might say to me, that's a seated position. Yeah, but it's a strength building seated position, which is a totally different thing to just sitting on the chair and chilling out which you need to do as well, of course. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. I'm just saying that you should do it in moderation. Um, so they're all strengthening moves for the quads. Now let's think about how would I stretch my quads? Um, and that's a really interesting question um, because it's very difficult to stretch from here to here without stretching in here as well into the hip flexors. So I'm going to show you one or two things where we can isolate the quads themselves, just the quadriceps. So I'm going to come down to kneel. So remember always I've said to you before, when you're kneeling, make sure you, su you support your knees. Um, that's really, really important. Um, so you would double over your mat. You can see I've got a couple of mats here. Um, so I would, 
if I only had one mat, I would double it back. And certainly if I just had a towel on the floor, I would put an extra towel there as well. So this one, now you need to be quite um, specific with the way you do this. So you can just lean back. Okay, so just take your body back. So now I've taken the hip flexors here out of it and I'm just allowing my body to stretch back. And one more time. And you can really feel that. I can feel that all the way down through my quadriceps. And then coming forward. And then I'm going to show you one more way of stretching your quads and then we'll be um, moving on uh, to our next sequence. So I'm going to lie down on my mat or on your rug or whatever you've got going. And you can have the, the under knee straight or it can be bent. You can come all the way down and lie on your side with your hand under your head. And then you can hold on to the front of your right ankle. And then you're pushing your hip forward rather than pulling your knee back. Now there's a little bit of hip flexor in that as well. And then you release it. And then you do it again. And you would hold these maybe for five or six seconds and release. And one last time. And then release. And coming back up to standing, I'm using my hand again, lazy today. You can do this standing as well. So if you want to put a hand to the wall, grounding down into your left foot and take your right one up. So you're not taking it back here. That's not the stretch we're looking for. Both knees together and pushing the hip forward. So you're stretching into the quad. And then you would do exactly the same on the other side. Always with my shoulders back, always thinking about the rest of my body in connection with what's going on in my quadriceps in this stage. And then releasing it. And then just to finish off then, the one of the um, new kind of, oh, I don't know, fashionable ways of thinking about what goes wrong with people's bodies is talking about the sitting disease. And that's because literally most of us sit too much, um, whether it's for work, which is unavoidable, of course, or just because, you know, we have the time to do it. So one of the things, one of the ways of counteracting that is every, say, 20 minutes, at least every half hour, that you stand up. And you stand up without using the aid of your hands. And maybe you, you, you stand up and down a couple of times, something as simple as that, to release that a kind of constant position of your thighs. Um, and I've said to you before when we were looking at the hamstrings, the hamstrings are also under pressure when we sit a lot. So enough for today. So quadriceps we looked at today, looking at ways of strengthening them. Number one, really, really important. And then looking at ways of stretching them, of trying to get the nice healthy length into your quadriceps. So as the sun shines, um, I will let you go and I will see you the next day when we're going to look at, let me think, what's next? Hip flexors. Okay, what we were trying to avoid looking at today. We're going to be looking at our hip flexors next and we'll have a little series on that, strengthening and um, getting flexibility into them. And with that, enjoy the rest of your day and be good. <laughs>